Hello everyone, welcome to Power Electronics Tutorials. In this video, I am going to discuss on the sinusoidal pulse width modulation technique. In my previous two videos, I have already discussed two pulse width modulation control techniques for controlling the output of a single phase full bridge inverter. The first technique I discussed was the single pulse width modulation control technique. The waveforms for the same are shown in the figure here. You can watch the video on single pulse width modulation by clicking the link shown in the top right corner right now. The second PWM technique I discussed is the multiple pulse width modulation control technique. The waveforms for multiple pulse width modulation are shown in figure 2 here. Once again, you can watch the video on multiple pulse width modulation by clicking on the link shown here. I will also leave the link of both these videos in the description below. What should be noted is, in both the single pulse width modulation as well as the multiple pulse width modulation technique, the type of the reference signal used is rectangular in nature. This in fact, as we have already discussed, resulted in a constant width pulses for driving the transistors. This in fact can be seen across the waveforms for G1 and G2 and G3 and G4. Since this is a pulse width modulation technique, we would quite definitely desire variable pulses for driving the transistor of the full bridge inverter. This drawback therefore can be overcome by using a sinusoidal reference signal in place of a rectangular reference signal and such a technique is called sinusoidal pulse width modulation technique and this is the topic of this video. In fact, I have shown the waveforms for the sinusoidal pulse width modulation in this figure 3 and please note the type of the reference signal. This time it is sinusoidal in nature and hence the name. Let us first discuss what is the advantage of using a sinusoidal reference signal in place of a rectangular reference signal. The reason is using a sinusoidal reference signal creates variation in the pulse width that are generated to drive the transistors in proportion to the amplitude of the sine wave at that instant. That is, the amplitude of the sinusoidal signal continuously changes in the period of one half cycle. Therefore, the modulation index, which is the ratio of the reference signal amplitude to the carrier signal amplitude, is constantly changing and therefore, the widths that are produced when these signals overlap will have variable widths. Also, by using a sinusoidal reference signal, the distortion factor and the lower order harmonics generated at the inverter output can also be reduced. Therefore, the sinusoidal reference signal is much more advantageous in producing a good quality inverter output compared to the rectangular reference signal. Let us now understand how a sinusoidal pulse width modulation technique works. As you can see here, a sinusoidal reference signal of frequency FR is compared with a triangular carrier signal of frequency FC. Whenever the two waveforms overlap, a pulse is generated to drive the base of the transistor in the full bridge inverter circuit. Note that the reference and the carrier signals overlap more than once in each half cycle. Therefore, multiple pulses will be generated in each half cycle. This is very similar to a multiple pulse width modulation technique where the number of pulses created per half cycle can be controlled by the frequency of the carrier signal. Further, the frequency of the output voltage of the inverter is controlled by the frequency of the reference signal which is the sine order signal for this technique. When such pulses are fed to drive the transistors in the full bridge inverter circuit, we will obtain an output voltage waveform which looks as in the last waveform here. You should note that in this waveform, I have shown both the sinusoidal signal as well as the inverted sinusoidal signal. In fact, the waveforms that are generated for driving the transistors of the full bridge inverter can also be obtained by using the alternative representation for sinusoidal pulse width modulation technique. 
Please note, in this particular waveform, we have used a unidirectional triangular carrier wave. Both these techniques will produce the same exact output and therefore the waveform what I have shown here for the full bridge inverter remains the same irrespective of whether you use a bidirectional carrier or a unidirectional carrier. Moving on, as I already said, the ratio of the reference signal amplitude AR to the carrier signal amplitude AC is called the modulation index and this acts as a control variable. The value of the modulation index M can vary from 0 and 1 and it controls the width of the gate drive pulses generated. Smaller the modulation index, which means the value of the reference signal amplitude is small, smaller will be the widths of the gate pulses generated. As the value of M increases, which happens when the value of the reference signal amplitude increases, the pulse widths will start to increase. As these pulses are used to drive the transistors of the full bridge inverter, the output of the inverter will accordingly vary and that is how we will be controlling the inverter output. In an interesting note, if the frequency of the carrier signal and the frequency of the reference signal are equal, then this technique will generate only a single pulse per half cycle and this is equivalent to a single pulse width modulation technique. On the other hand, if the frequency of the carrier signal FC is greater than the frequency of the reference signal FR, then multiple pulses will be generated as shown in the waveforms here. This is equivalent to multiple pulse width modulation technique. We must note that unlike the multiple pulse width modulation technique, the pulses generated by the sinusoidal pulse width modulation technique are of varying widths and therefore this technique produces a better quality output than multiple pulse width modulation technique. For reference, I will be showing now the waveforms for the base pulses generated by multiple pulse width modulation. You can see all of these pulses generated per half cycle have the exact same widths. This disadvantage is overcome by replacing the rectangular reference signal by a sinusoidal reference signal and hence we say the sinusoidal pulse width modulation has advantages over multiple pulse width modulation. Lastly, coming to the mathematical aspect of the discussion, we have already stated the modulation index is a ratio of the reference signal amplitude AR to the carrier signal amplitude AC. And the instantaneous output voltage is obtained as V0 equals Vs where Vs is a supply voltage multiplied by Vg1 G2 minus Vg3 G4. Please make this correction. This is Vg3 G4. Let us see what are these voltages. In fact, now we are referring to these waveforms. This is VG1, G2 and this is VG3, G4. Similar to how we have defined the number of pulses per half cycle in multiple pulse width modulation, once again, we are going to use the same formula for defining the number of pulses per half cycle and this is going to be equal to P which represents the number of pulses equals FC divided by 2 FR. Now the ratio of FC by FR is called the frequency modulation ratio and is denoted by MF. Therefore the number of pulses can also be defined as MF divided by 2. If we denote delta M to be the width of the mth pulse then the output RMS voltage is given by the expression V0 equals Vs into summation m varying from 1 to p where p is the number of pulses per half cycle multiplied by delta m divided by pi whole to the power of 1 by 2. Right, that is about the discussion on sinusoidal pulse width modulation technique. In my next video, I will discuss on a modified version of the sinusoidal pulse width modulation technique. So, stay tuned. If you like this video, then kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos on power electronics. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.